So you people got a big day to some freedoms going on. They have freedoms coming up. It's called the Fourth of July. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, some freedoms coming up. A day of freedom and festivities. Fourth of July. Independence Day. Freedom. Democracy. What do these words mean? Hmm? We couldn't resist touching on this particular subject matter concerning the Freud of July. The 4th of July, the Freud of July. It's, it's really, really very interesting. And the Bible says that my, my people uh, perish because of a lack of knowledge. In other words, the people perish, they're destroyed. Um, not just that they just die, but even before they so-called physically die, they are destroyed. What, what people are like this? It's the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. It's so-called Negroes, blacks, and coloreds who love to have them some barbecue, you know, to have a day of partying and drinking and music and a revelry. But what are you really, what are you really celebrating except another expression of the golden calf. Mm -hmm. The golden calf in this spiritual Egypt that you're in. But a lot of folks, this, you know, they, they don't want to hear that. But my brothers and sisters, those of y'all who are checking this out, I know y'all want to hear a little bit more about the Freud of July, otherwise known as the 4th of July. What is it and what is it really? Well, the first thing we want to deal with is the fact of the so-called Statue of Liberty, going back to 1865. And, and, and do a Google on this, Black Lady Liberty. Um, I think some of the first couple of, if you check the images, you probably will see some of the original um, African, Ethiopian, black, the, the statue so-called of so-called liberty was originally intended to be an Ethiopian or a black woman, a so-called African-American, more correctly, an Ethiopian black woman, or you can say a Moorish woman, because if you understand the English language, it was the Europeans trying to figure out who we really were and still trying to identify us by different names. But when you go through the whole Moorish thing and you really boil it down to the root, you get to the root of Ethiopia, you understand? And then now they use Africa in a certain sense. But then when you really break down Ethiopia, Africa, that's what we did this right here going back to Tobia. Because some folks will tell you that Ethiopia is really a Greek word. And so I asked them, do you speak um, any Afro-Shemitic language? I mean, do you speak it? Do you, have you studied it? Um, do you do any research in anything other than so-called English? And are you even any good in Latin or anything like that, or Greek? To really, even the European roots will lead you to the truth. You understand more of the truth. But really, the fullness of it, we have to go to our own roots, to our own vine and to our own proverbial fig tree. And at that root, we find Tobia. The Greeks came in, and the Greeks according to our history or legend, the Ethiopian, the African, the black man story, the African, the native, the original story, it was the Greeks who came in, met a king named um, Ethiopus or Tobia, Tobia, uh, Tobias or Tobia, and when they heard that particular name, they associated that name with their language and said burnt face, the people with the burnt faces. So they associated what they heard as Tobia with Ethiopia. And this is how we get the name um, Ethiopia. So when you hear folks say that, well, it comes from the Greeks, what they really should say is that the Greeks have interpreted the ancient archaic name of Ethiopia, right, from Tobia. You understand? Know, from Tobias, the archaic name of Ethiopia. Now, we've touched on that before, but we find it necessary to, to touch on that particular point again, because still there's so much disinformation out there. 
Yovas, and we can get into the archives and the facts, so forth and so on. And a lot of these things are in public record, but you have to do your due diligence. You have to search. You have to study for it. You understand? You have to find this, study and show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So now let's deal with the truth about the Statue of Liberty and the fraud of July. Now it's a fraud, especially when you don't know that the original Statue of Liberty was intended by the original um, designers. Um, I think um, La 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 Boli or La Bola and um, Bartholdi, Bar Bartholdi or something like that to that effect, some European um, Frenchmen, they were liberals. They were liberals, and, and they had more civilized views of the situation back in the 19th century, 1865, and they wanted to give a gift to America vis-a-vis -vis the American um, revolutionary and civil wars vis-a-vis -vis England and certain things like that to the Americans and they want to symbolize America's freedom with a statue of a black woman holding a torch and break, first breaking some chains and then holding a torch. There were different designs that were submitted. But when it was submitted to the American Peckerwood, you understand the so-called Anglo-Americans, they rejected this African uh, symbology, this symbology of a black woman, you know, and a black woman bursting these chains. And it's interesting, and in, not in this vid, but hopefully in the next vid, and it's, we hope that there's other vids out there. We didn't search and see if there's other vids out there. We know some of the still images are out there, which actually shows you some of the original um, sketch work by these particular artists and, and intellectuals, French French intellectuals, and, that, and when you recognize they're French, it makes a lot much more sense when you recognize um, the fact it was the 19th century, 1865, what was going on, not just in America, but the whole global scene, and we can't forget about IET, we can't forget about Haiti as well. In fact, the real idea or the real um, essence of the Statue of Liberty actually comes from this particular image right here. You understand? Or the Black Madonna, or the mother of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshia, Jesus Christos, and the Black Virgin Mother. That's the, that was the original idea behind the original African or Ethiopian or Black woman for the symbology of Lady Liberty of Lady Liberty. And now that leads me to another subject matter. Let me just put this over here, right? Another subject matter connected with the original idea or the original imagery for the Statue of Liberty. Well, the Peckerwoods, the, the, the racist Anglo, Gentile, European, white racist slaveholding Americans, you know, it's still all that still was going on north versus south, these white boys versus those white boys. And yes, some of them actually were more human beings. They recognized that slavery was wrong and some actually were willing, like John Brown, to risk themselves for that just cause. And others, such as in France, recognizing that wanted to submit to America and for that, um, you know, the harbor out there in New York, a image of a black woman bursting these chains, at symbolic of not just America, but all of humanity. Now, this is a little before that they had all the evidence, right, that they claim proved that life originated out of Africa, such as the fossil bones, such as the archaeology, the ancient history, even the Bible, that points to the origins in this very same place, Ethiopia, or more correctly, according to the archaic name, Tobia, Tobia, which in the Bible is like the name Tobijah, right, because Tobijah means the good Jah, or the good I am. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, the good God, in other words, in translation. But then I said, what about that word liberty? How liberty and freedom are not really 
correctly understood by most people. Freedom. Freedom. What does freedom really, really mean? And, and why do they give you liberties, but they really don't give you rights? In other words, look at these words, and I know it's a little bit legal, and people say, oh, that's too legalistic. Well, with the grace of our Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach, we should not be so-called legalistic, you understand, in that sense, because he fulfills, you understand, that law for righteousness, first for Judah, first for Ethiopian he black people, and then for Gentiles. And that's the order for all, if they would receive it, in their proper order. And this also touches on, well, what is our relationship with the Gentiles? As a brother in Wendon Manley had um, texted me a couple of days ago, he says there's a difference between Gentile Rastafari, Gentiles who are Rastafari, European, white, and maybe Asian, and other non-Ethiopian Hebrew Rastafari, and, um, and, and, and Gentiles in the EWF, which is the Ethiopian World Federation, because that's for we, the black people. And I said, that brother right there, he, he understands that there are also dark-skinned Gentiles. You understand? And unfortunately, um, modern Ethiopia hasn't really understood that. At least the righteous remnant haven't fully, fully understood that. You understand? It was the Gentile Ethiopians or we can say the heathenistic, ungodly Ethiopians that sought to overturn that 3,000-year-old God-given, coveted, Solomonic or Davidic monarchy that Kedamawi Haile Selassie was, is, and will be the righteous symbol thereof. That's a little different point right there vis-a-vis -vis the Gentiles. But let's get into this word about why we call it the fraud of July. Like we mentioned about the Statue of Liberty. And see, a lot of folks would be like, uh, I don't think so. No, the Statue of Liberty is not, is not a black woman. It can't be a black woman. And, and you've got Internet. You know what I mean? In other words, you can really research these things in a, in a, from a variety of resources. You understand? All over the world. You know, saying different folks have been opining on this issue, providing evidence of this issue that the original Statue of Liberty was to be an image of a black woman, you know, saying bursting out of the chains, you know, saying of slavery. And we liken that and connect that with Edistin Gilmarium. Another work that we want to recommend for the sisters is a new publication, The Legends, The Ethiopic Legends of Our Lady Mary. Very, very important to help to restore, you understand, the, 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 the psyche as well as the body, like I said, in virgin, in mind, and in body, to restore the damage done by 400 plus years of white supremacy, 400 plus years of satanic downpression, destroying our, our, our love of, of God, the true love and relationship of God and of one another, so much so that this image to many folks, they'll say, oh, it's too dark. You understand? I mean, where does that come from? The devil? Of course, it comes from the devil. It comes from Satan. You say you believe in God, right? You understand? And this is how God made you. But why don't you like that? Because someone else has lied to you. And, you know, let's just get into the Bible right now because, um, what was it, John, John 10 and 10. Uh, I, I need to put this out there. Now, we talk about Satan is a counterfeiter. The devil, he seeks to counterfeit. But what does he seek to counterfeit? The devil seeks to counterfeit the things of God. Now, folks will say, oh, all you're trying to do is, like, blackwash things that are Jewish or Christian. See, folks will say that. But you know these are either just um, idiots, you know, foolish people, unlearned people, novices. Because if they were to do some honest, serious, and diligent research on these matters and not have a, a, an ungodly or evil heart towards Ethiopianness or blackness, you understand, or originality, they'll recognize that 
Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus is, was, will be black. His mother was black. You understand? The Israelites were black. You understand that that life and creation came from that place we call, or that direction we call Ethiopia. It's the first place that is mentioned in the Bible. Yet, when you mention Ethiopia, or you go around to some of these blogs and web pages where where somebody Ethiopian will come up in the news, like we heard about this housewives of of L.A. or Atlanta, or whatever, or millionaire house, whatever the housewives show was. And one of these, the count, there's something, 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 must have been sleeping with some Ethiopian or whatever woman who claims to be some princess, so forth and so on. And when you see the evil, the nasty, the hateful, the ungodly comments, even by some so-called Ethiopians, because they're caught up in their little tribalism. But we learn from the scripture the devil would use this. He would divide kingdom against kingdom and people against people. He will divide and conquer all of them by playing to these particular differences. You understand? And that's basically the making of America. If you think about it, that's even how America is running right now. You understand? It's playing to these differences, giving the people a lot of bread and circus. So, um, tomorrow, I think this is the eve, tomorrow is the fraud of July. The fraud of July. You understand? The fraud of July. Makes sense out of nonsense. The fraud of July. So here in St. John chapter 10, right? St. John chapter 10, verse, we'll begin from verse 7, right? Verse 7, it says that, um, well, this is the parable that Yeshua spake to them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake to them. So here we read that Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, spoke to them, but they didn't understand. They didn't comprehend, what does it say, what things they were which he spake to them. But he was speaking a language that they could understand, but they did not overstand. You know what I mean? They, they, they maybe had a slight understanding, but in overstanding, they were deficient. They did not overstand. Then said Yeshua, then said yes to them, verily, verily, amen, amen. Truth, truth. Ognet, ognet, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. The sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Find pasture. That means find all your provisions. You understand? Find all of our provisions. Every, everything we need. We won't have to rely on our artificial status of Negro, black, and colored, 13th, 14th Amendment, or whatnot. Our God will be bigger than just just America and white man, you know, because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's if you if you have faith and 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 and, and works, because faith without works is dead. You must be able to act on that faith. You understand? You must be able to act on that faith. But the devil has come and brought about a counterfeit. That's what you call your Statue of Liberty in the harbor today. That wasn't the original idea. Has anybody really asked them or made this a public discussion? It's like, hey, we, you know, the facts are that the French, um, Boley, I think, Edward, Rene, um, what's his name, La Febre, La, La Febre, um, La Boley, and, and Bartholdi, that these guys, the French guys, they understood what was going on, and they wanted to contribute this as, 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 as a, as an honor to the role that black people, but in particular the black woman, play not just in not just in um, liberty for black people, but for America. Why is not the black woman that particular image? Cause remember, it was the same black woman that were raising not only their own children, but were being the nannies, you know, and and and, and the mothers really to the so-called lazy white woman's children back in the time of chattel slavery, so forth and so on. And in a sense, that's the same thing that a lot of the nannies do to this very day. So why not? 
You know, saying the, the only reason why the white woman has any boldness, and some of them have admitted it when we spoke about feminism, the only reason why the white woman have any real kind of boldness, she learns it from her black mothers, not sisters. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit too, too, you know, from their black mothers. You know, what I'm saying they learn about that so-called boldness and so many other things they learn, both good and nowadays, a lot of, a lot of negative shit. You understand? But verse 10 says what? So they, they counterfeited it, right? They counterfeited it. See how Yeshua in the catacombs is a black man, an Ethiopian. In the, in the Roman catacombs, going back to the earliest days of Christianity, they know this. You know what I'm saying? It's like what they did with King Tut. They know how he looked. They have all these statues and, and other images, but then they say, we're going to get a reconstruction Wait, they're reconstruct. They're showing you how he looks. They said, "Oh, that's an idealized. Oh, it's idealized because he looks like a a black man or an Ethiopian boy, a black boy. You understand? Because he looks African, so it's idealized. Y'all need now to make up some fraud and make him look like one of your pale red Greek and Roman bastard Arabs. I say bastard because they're the children the Romans left. You know, after they did all that mess." in that part of the world. You know what I'm saying? That's really, the, you know, that's, that's the truth about it. Go watch Lawrence of Arabia, right? But anyway, continuing, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When has the righteous Ethiopian or African gone into Europe and, and stolen from the Europeans that which was not already theirs, when did he go into Europe to kill Europeans who had not come into Africa or Ethiopia to kill them? When has he gone into Europe to destroy where no destruction by these people have occurred in Africa? When has that happened? You see, but European history, even unedited by us, you understand, is full of their own bloody testimonies. Like nowadays they talk about bullying. You know, you hear a lot of talk about bullying is bad. What do you think when they send big battleships and, 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 and hundreds of thousands of troops and, 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 and drones and all type of other specialized stuff to say, listen, we want to get that oil. We need this. This is for us. This is for our economy. This is to keep us number one. And then you Negroes say, yes, that's right. America needs to do that. And yet they cut the programs in your inner cities and can't even bail out the homeowners, giving them Freddie Mac and, and Fannie Mae. I mean, this sounds so much like slavery, Willie Lynchism. People don't get it because they turn away from the truth, and this is why they can continue, the thief can continue to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. See, that's how you know the thief. He comes to do what? To, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Look at Africa. You're blaming the Africans. The Africans are, are to blame. Even we over here in the West is to blame. But who's really to blame about the situation in Africa? They want to talk about a handful of real European Christians, a handful of them, who really probably went there and really did some good things. And we should give thanks to Jah for those few white boys and girls who really did believe in the gospel and didn't harbor this sickness, this leprous, uncircumcised heart. You know, we, we need to thank Jah for those few. You understand? Let's just find out who they were because... You know, we could tell you about John Brown. You know anybody else? All right. So it says, I am, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's what I quote is from. John 10.10. 10. They say 10.10 10 wins, right? But, but, but not over, over this. I hear a lot of these prosperity pimps and preachers and pastors, these, these counterfeit, these, these really antichrist, apostate teachers. They love to quote that. Jesus came and said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Now you give it your tithes and you often, if you want that life, I mean, basically it's what they're saying. Not all of them. But many of them, that's what they're saying. They're not preaching the real gospel of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm speaking to Negro people, niggas first. 
You know, because the white people, the Europeans, at least they get the practical application out of it. You know, what I mean, they may not always be consistent in their in their operation in Christianity, but at least when you go to a white town or neighborhood that really claims to be Christian, you don't have a whole bunch of drive-by shootings and murders and a whole bunch of family breakdowns in the proportion. It still happens. Because there be some nigga going to say, oh, what do you mean? White people doing the same thing that black people doing. You can't. See, those, those folks are caught in, in a kind of, uh, uh, you know, a kind of sympathetic trap it's a, in a sense almost like a yin-yang kind of a thing. You know, they're stuck. They, they identify themselves according to white supremacy. Those are the Negroes that Willie Lynch said that if we are successful, it will be self-perpetuating. You know what I mean? If we're successful with this mind control, this trauma, slave-based mind control, we'll have Negroes that will say, oh, the white people do the same sort of thing that black people do. Uh, the poor white trash, perhaps. You understand? But, but who's really running the society? Oh, Obama is? You all better pray or learn how to pray. And, you know, things look very, very strange on the horizon. It, it, it really, really does. You understand? But that's not a fear for I and I, because we know that John's will will be done. You understand? Our role and responsibility is to make sure that we are in his will through Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? So I and I will be I. You know, we'd be all right, we'd be all right, you understand, in this world and the world to come. You understand, because some folks are just stressing out. You, you know what I mean? They're stressing out about things that never even happened yet. They don't even know if it will happen. They just, they're just seeing it. When they think about it, like, I get sick just thinking about it. I get a headache. I, that, that's a deep fear. That's a deep phobia. That's a strong demon and a devil. And no amount of prescription pills psychological, European psychological Freudian help. None of that is going to help you because look how it's helping the white man. It's not helping him. He's just running more games. He's, he, he's gotten very, very good at this game. You know what I mean? It's like they say practice. Practice makes perfect. If you practice righteousness, righteousness will become perfect. If you practice wickedness, and we're in a time when wickedness has been so well practiced, one can't, didn't even see when the wool was pulled over their eyes uh, another time. And, and this is the situation that we're in right now. Now, what we want to touch on is Romans 10.10 10 for a moment. Let's just go to Romans 10.10. Romans 10. I'm on the 10.10 10 trip right now. Let's go to Romans 10.10. 10. Let's go to, what does Romans 10.10 10 say? It says, for with the heart man, now there's that word again, believe it. Remember, we always like to get to our Ethiopic root, etymological root, going to the headwaters of the Nile, going to source. Because if you look at that word, be like Eve, you're going to be caught up in, in spookism. Not so you're being caught up in spookism. The word believe in the Hebrew, Hebrew is ma men. In the Ethiopic, it's basically the same root, ma men, right? And, and you have amene, and then you have amen that comes from when people say amen. Revelation 3.14, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he identifies himself by one of the primary so-called gods of the ancient world and says, I am the Amen, which kind of clarifies a whole lot, scripturally, biblically speaking, if you're coming from your own root, you understand if you are preserving the birthright, right, and living within the contract or the covenant, it becomes very clear. So how we want to upgrade this is, for with the heart, man admits as truth. When we say amen, it's to admit that as truth. Amen. So, so it be, so it will be, so it is. It's like when we say it is what it is, it's to say amen. So when you say it is what it is, yo, amen, amen. That's, that's the same meaning of it. So when you say I admit, amenalo, translated in English, I believe. You understand? Oh, what you're really saying at the root, outside of spookism, is I admit that it is what it is. No doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt. Now, true, there can be true admittance and false admittance. You can believe in the dollar bill and have strong faith in the dollar bill, but you don't know that it's basically worthless. So it might, it might work for you for a while. So this is not talking about what you set your admittance on, because many people believe in the world. You understand? They believe, and that's why the world seems to work for them. 
but they're not able to see the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? So here it's saying, for with the heart, in other words, with your heart, with your consciousness, you admit, you understand? We admit to righteousness. We admit to right relationship. We admit into Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? Who, by the way, his mama was black too. So the French, the French were on to something. They have a lot of these cathedrals, ancient cathedrals up there, because there was a black presence up in France too. The black nobility's presence was there too. And so you get some of that uh, in Da Vinci stuff. There's some truth to that, but as long as they're not talking about the black, they're not telling you the truth. So that's how you can know about it. As long as they're telling you some white folks or something like that, and they're not making that clear Ethiopian, African, Moorish connection, they're lying to you, basically. They might be telling you something, but they're disguising it. You understand? They're being a deceiver. They're trying to steal. You understand? They're trying to kill your, you know, kill your history and destroy you. That's why in Hosea it says, my people perish, the same word destroy, for lack of knowledge. So if you, if you don't do the gnosis, you understand? If you don't seek to know the truth for yourself, it's like right now, if you violate some law and you end up in court and you say, your honor, your honor, I... I didn't know that that was, uh, that was against the law, Your Honor. And the judge will say, oh, I, I, I hear you. I, I understand you didn't know so-and-so. Negro, black, and color, Smith, Jones, Johnson, uh, Michael Jackson, George Jefferson, a uh, black person. Uh, but ignorance of the law is no excuse. You need to go out there and take a civics course. Now, in a sense, the judge is correct. But then you have to ask yourself, why did my preacher tell me that? My preacher is telling me I'm free from the law and all these things, but now the civilian authority, Rome, isn't Rome the same one that crucified my Lord and Savior? See, you don't think about that. You're not working it out for yourself. But anyway, you know, um, be, it as, be it as it may for you, um, it says right here, and with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. You see, so first it says that with the heart, you have to admit as true, with your consciousness. Some people know a lot of this knowledge. You know, they've read a lot of books, and they, they know it. But I hate to say it, but they really don't mamen it. In other words, in your language, or King James language, they really don't believe it. But in better language, in amplified Bible language, they really don't admit on uh, admit it, have faith in it, exercise faith in it as being true. Because if they really start to exercise faith, remember, faith without what is that? Faith without works. That means they would have to, like Michael Jackson sung about, um, I'm, I'm looking at the man in the mirror, right? That he's trying to change his ways. You'll be trying to change your ways. You know what I'm saying? Because if you recognize something, you know, like that same and uh, uh, situation I gave you where people have showed up in court and said, Your Honor, Your Honor, please, I didn't know that that was breaking any law. I, I didn't know. And the judge will say, well, yeah, well, ignorance of the law is no excuse. How old are you? You should be ashamed. Of, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll make you feel like shit because you didn't know the law. And now check this out. You want to you wanna, you wanna talk about law? You don't want to learn the Bible? You know what I'm saying? Check it out. This is the Blacks. This is like a $500 book, maybe even more now. You know what I'm saying? Blacks Law Dictionary. Look how thick it is, right? Look how thick it is. And in fact, you can't just go on the Internet. I mean, you might have to find it on the Internet in some PDF forms or whatever like that, but you won't be able to go on the Internet and say, I want to buy this book. You know what I'm saying? You will either have to get it from someone who who is in the law, you understand that means in the bar, so forth and so on, or somehow connected. This is not for regular folks. It explains the central terminologies, everything else. So when the judge says um, ignorance of the law is no excuse, look at this book, which is like a Bible, right? And this is one book. This is just a dictionary, just defining some of the basic terms. You understand? So um, the interesting thing is, when you, under, when, when you study the Bible, really study it. Not like some of these foolish people. Cause some, you see what's happening a lot of folks. A lot of people say, um, I don't be dealing with the Bible because the Bible got some ridiculous, crazy stuff in it. You understand? And all this such and such. 
Well, you know, the, 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 the stealer, the, the killer, the thief, the killer, and the destroyer had tried to destroy the reasonability of this Bible. And one of the clear and evident ways that the deceiver has done this is to paint everybody white and to make it a European story, to make it a European thing. You understand? And you really have to do your homework. That, that's one of the first things you have to get beyond that. You really have to recognize that the people we're speaking about as Israel were black people. And when you can understand that, and, and we've pointed out some of the other companion books here that one can study as well, like um, some of the Rudolph uh, Windsor some of the Rudolf Windsor books that we had pointed out previously from Babylon to Timbuktu and um, um, Valley of the Dry Bones, which are some excellent books. They're not really, really big, big, voluminous books. I mean, they're really easy to read, and they give you some important references, and they can be excellent ways to start off, to start off some basic studies, as well as this particular booklet right here. We've been looking on the internet, but we haven't found the full one. This is kind of a bad, a bad photocopy. Y'all remember what it used to be back in the days, back in the 90s, and even a little before the 90s and stuff. This, this one right here is um, Blackout Through Whitewash. This is by S S E uh, or Suzar. I always thought Suzar was a was was a brother, uh, but I think it's a sister. You understand? Know if if my informants and sources. Bear, bear me out on this. Um, this is a very, very good work right here. I like to suggest it to some of the churchical branches, societies, and study groups um, to get a copy of this. We're probably going to have this scanned and put on the web or try to find the entire one because most of the, the, the copies out there is like up to page 35. And this document, this first document here, I think has... Um, has a, a part two section of it. I think it has 235 page sections in it. Um, so this is a full, a full, full copy of it. It's, it's very important. It also gives you some summary, some summary information, some summary history. You know, some of the basics, some of the highlights, because m many of these areas that we talk about, I mean, some research that spent their whole lives just, just, just going into just certain areas of study, and we may not have that, um, that leisure, you understand, to really find the truth, so sometimes we need to get the, you know, the basic highlights of it, and then as we're doing more studies and see some areas need to be probed more, at least we'll be rightly orientated on those particular subject matters. But on to the fraud of July. Two very important things. I think I'm going I'm to take this down, even though it kind of relates to the fraud of July. You know, this was from the male circumcision. So if you see this first, it's probably because the 4th of July is, 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 is coming on and we want to deal with the fraud, the, fraud of, the, the fraud of July. Even this book here, Dick Gregory's book right here that we mentioned before, it's kind of a biblical perspective, but it's interesting. I showed you this before right here, the Gregory's Bible Tales right here. Um, it's a really interesting work right there. Um, you can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and forward slash studies for some of the freeware, shareware, downloadables, and everything else right there, as well as the books page. If some particular books that we mention, or you want to check out what we have available. Um, but if for some of the free downloadables, go to the study page, you know, because um, where we can find certain works and just share it, you know, freely, freely, rec freely receive, freely give, freely receive, freely receive, freely give. But what we want to touch on right here, so, so we're clear on this right now. For now, we'll go back into that a little bit later at a suitable time. And if you haven't seen that vid, then stay tuned. Ja Willem will upload that vid. We just want to get some space here so we can touch on a little bit more about the fraud of July. Now, what is a fraud? What's a fraud? A fraud is like, is like um, something that is false, that is, that is not what it claims to be. You understand? So what does this day claim to be? It's... Independence Day, okay, 
Independence Day for who or for whom. Now, see, a lot of black folks have got into a very comfortable um, position with a, a bad understanding of what their status and jurisdiction or lack thereof really is. You see, because if you really start to study some things, people say, well, I'm a citizen. That's an interesting word, too, as well. I try to discuss it with some Federation folks, some of our brothers and sisters in the Federation, and perhaps we didn't have means like this to really go into a little bit more detail, a little more details on it. Let, let, let me get this, this document right here. Let me get this document right here. This document that we have right here is, um, excuse me for a moment, uh, so much things to say right now. I know I got so much things to say. Yeah. I never forget, no way, right? They crucified Jesus Christ. Yeah. I like that part right there. Now, it, prisoner of war. You ever seen this? We have our own prisoner of war, but this is from a particular brother of I and I that did his prisoner of war certificate right here. And LOJ is about to relaunch the prisoner of war certificate. What is this all about? Now, yes, you can see many ones can do it. I mean, there's different presentations. It's like when you look at different states. Different states have the same kind of documentation, so forth and so on, but they do it in a different, you know, slightly different way, slightly different word. And the main thing is to learn, well, what are the key, what are the key principles, right? Now, this prison of war is a certificate of identification for one brother, um, Danny Davis, right? And he shared with me, this was, this was his portfolio right here. This is from some years now, um, where this is how he basically went around, went about to correct um, his status. I, I don't think he did the name part, but he was just dealing with the status part. Uh, the, the highest part is when you deal with the name as well. But it's very important, brothers and sisters, to gain a good knowledge about these things. I mean, just running off and doing things that you're not well acquainted with is not advisable. You understand? Because our Messiah, our black Lord, our Gita Adonai says, ye shall know the truth, and it's the truth that shall set you free. So anybody coming with, well, you get a free dumb because they made some piece of paper, and that's outside of this knowledge of the truth that the Messiah you understand, our Lord, the, the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords speaks of is, 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 is fraught with folly. It's just fraught with folly. But right here he says something very interesting concerning this. Um, let's put this up here. The fraud, right? The fraud. I should put this up here from the beginning, right? The fraud of, how should we spell July, right? Yeah. Um, should we be nice? No, we shouldn't be nice. July. All right, and then parentheses, we'll spell it the way they spell Now, July comes from Julius, Julius Caesar. You all seen that Cleopatra rubbish, right? You seen the Cleopatra rubbish? Do you really know what was going on at that, what it really, really was about? You need to check out Empire, Empire of the City is one name of it, or Ring, Ring of Power, Ring of Power, Empire of the City. Something Empire of the City, I think, is the name of this vid. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting when you understand kind of the connection here, you understand, of Ethiopian Hebrew people in antiquity. The fraud of July. Now, you know why I say July? Because many of our cousins, you know what I mean, speaking about the, the converted Khazars and Jews, European Jews, many of them knew more than they was telling us. There were a few that tried to tell us, but many of those few that tried to tell us, the European Jews, that really recognized who we are, things were bad for them. I mean, it's kind of strange because the white boy, the Peckerwood, the Anglo Peckerwood would kill the Jew, would hate the Jew and the Negro for almost an equal hatred. He would say he hated the Jew more than the Negro, but he hated them both. 
what we really didn't recognize was that the Negro, black and the colored, was the real Judah, the real Judahite, and thus the real Jew. You know what I'm saying? And what the converted Jew, most times, some did. Some know this truth. And then we have to, you know, we have to note those few, like some of those who did some good in Africa, those few. And when we say few, we mean a hand, a handful few. Yovas. That's what we call it July. We'll get into July. And it's not us, it's Revelation two and nine, three and nine. You understand? This is truth. This is not no bullying. People can go watch cartoons. You understand? This is for I and I people and we have human rights. You understand? We have valid human rights to discuss those issues that concern us as a people. So this concerns us. We need to know about the fraud of July. You know what I'm saying? Because they tell us that Abraham freed us. Abraham who? The white boy? Abraham Lincoln? He freed us? Then why is it called a Freedom Declaration Act and not an Emancipation Declaration Act? Oh, well, it's the same thing. Who tells us that? Is it the July that tells us that? Who tells us that's the same thing? You know what I'm saying? Come on, the Jew knows better. We, we, we got to lift up that big heavy book, Black's Law Book and not to my over the head with it, you know, so to get some knowledge in there, perhaps, or shall I open it up and read it? It tells you very clearly what emancipate. You know what? Let me not talk about it. Let me be about it. Let me, let, let, let me just go into this right here and share this with you. Okay. Emancipation. And I don't think I looked up this word. I mean, there's so many other words, too, but I don't think I looked up. Oh, here we go. Emancipation. Emancipation. Now, they have emancipated minor. They say a person under 18 years of age who is totally self-supporting. Emancipation now, the key word, it says this, the act by which one who was unfree or under the power or control of another is rendered free or set at liberty. Set at what? Why am I set at liberty and not just free? What's the difference between liberty and free? They'll tell you it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Why don't they use the same word? What, are they writing poetry or something like this? This is Shakespeare. They're shaking the spear at us. The pen is mightier than the sword. Or set at liberty and made his own master. Well, that's what they tell you right here. You know what I'm saying? That's what they tell you right here. But, but, but now notice how they connect this idea of emancipation with being a child. Notice that. We're talking about men and women, young and old. What about the old black so-called slave, men or women, who was older than their so-called masses? You know what we're saying? Sometimes their masses were little children. So you mean by the law they were considered to be little children? You see, what emancipation means really Let's go to the root. I mean, you can get it there, but remember, it's a, it's a legal dictionary, but behind legal dictionary is, is the literal. We go into the root of the word. We trace it usually to the Greek and the Latin, and that's how we get the root of the word, and then we find the different instances to prove the interpretation. That's, basic, that's basically how it basically goes. In law school, they tell you a lot of rubbish, and they say, you focus on car law, you focus on house law, you focus on shoe law, you focus on jacket and tie law, you know, and, and this, is, this is how they keep people divided, remember? Divided and conquered and everything. Emancipare means to, set, to, to release from hand. When black people were so-called emancipated, do you want to know what really happened to them? This brother here, he talks about it. You heard me mention it before, but we've got to keep hearing this. We've got to really keep hearing this because we don't keep hearing this. We don't really know what was going on or, or, or what sort of position we really, we really are in. Because when we were freed from, it says, since blacks were made property under the new laws, that supposedly emancipated them, and whites began to ask for civil rights to advance their cause, emancipating themselves. The country became one emancipated people. Both blacks and whites became forever burdened as slaves by the federal debt that, by constitutional law, 
they were not liable. I'm have gone too far. Okay, I went too far. This is in the article right here um, called um, Sovereignty and African American Blacks. You see it right there, Sovereignty and African American Blacks. Right, a very good article. For some years, I might have skimmed it before, but you know when you have some some documents and stuff like you might hear this now and don't really get it until later on you'd be like oh and then you might go back to this or just recall and continue your study on it and then it kind of comes together and you're like okay I thought that guy was crazy but now I understand that he's no guy he's a Hebrew or a Hebro a guy is a goy and a goy is a Gentile so don't call Rastafari ain't no guy anyway each day the news exposes so-called extremist groups that subscribe to a doctrine that the media calls anti-federal anti-government anti-american and even unpatriotic sound like a song right it is what are the disparities between the establishment and white folks in other words, what are, you know, there's a lot of white people. If you really think about it, you say, why are these white folks all up in arms against the federal government? Now, the Democrats will make you think that, well, it's because you black people are moving so far ahead and they're a bunch of racists. They might be, they might have racial tendencies. I mean, white supremacy has done a lot of damage, especially if you think it's damaged us. Imagine how much it's damaged white people. You know, making them believe a lie, like they're Superman. And then they jump out the window and recognize they don't got no wings. You know what I mean? They can't fly. What, <laughs> what is the argument based on? Why do some whites believe that the country has lost its sovereignty? Now, Negroes would be like, you are crazy. Obama was born in America. And I say to you all, I'll say this one more time. There's a bigger argument. And it's not so much even about Obama, whether you, in fact, in fact, whether he was or not, but they, they say that he might, there's some despair, but why are they so riled up about it? You see what I'm saying? Because you have to understand this whole emancipation thing here. When you understand this whole emancipation thing here and the con game, the con job that was done, then you will recognize when they say Obama is not like, you know, they say Obama is not like us. What do they mean that Obama is not like us? Obama is not like you Negroes, you, you Negroes, blacks, and coloreds. Well, it's kind of obvious. Look at his name. Barack Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. I mean, I mean, it sounds like he got an original name. You know? It sounds like Barack. You know, that's not like, that could be Arabic, that could be Hebrew. People saying, oh, it's, he's, it's Hebrew and Arabic, and they, they don't know which language to, to interpret it. And, you know, it says Ki Swahili, as though that's bad. I mean, that's a Afro-Shemitic. There's an Afro-Shemitic link in Ki Swahili. Why do you think the, the candles for Kwanzaa is like a menorah? It doesn't come from Jew, come out of Africa. You're saying the Jewish custom is an outgrowth out of Africa because those people were Africans. You know what I mean? But anyway, not to be racist, but just to be accurate. It says, finally, where do African-American black folks fall in the argument? Good word, fall. They do fall in the argument. They say, oh, it ain't about that. It's about making papers and, and getting that money and, and you just doing you. Listen, if we don't know the law, the law is going to do us all. That, 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 that's, that's that right there. I mean, I mean, we see it so often, even amongst some of the most successful, unless they be undercover proverbial kiss asses, and then they'll make it seem like, look, this is how you need to act too. Act like you receive a lobotomy. You know what I mean? What? That nigga used to be about some shit, but now look at him. You know what I mean? Um, call it the Malcolm X, uh, Mohammed, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, you know, the, the boxer guy, you know. I mean, I know they said some disease, he got punched around. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. And Mandela, too. And, and every black that you can get your hand on, they don't kill, something happens to them. They start, they start softening up what happens to them. Anyway, to solve these questions, we must revisit the 13th Amendment of the Constitution. This amendment was the emancipation of the black slave. And remember, black and white are two legal definitions. I'm not well, in law, black mean negative, 
white means positive, legally speaking. That's so why when he talk about it's a black ops project, it's a black program. Oh, so black folks? No, no, we just can't tell you nothing about it. For real. You mean when it's a black project, it has a lot of money, it's secret, you can't touch it, even Congress and the president might not even know about it, right? That's a black project. Wow. See how they were able to flip the word? See how they do that? They flip the word right there? Because they understand the legal definition. They say, when we're using this word, we're using it according to this, what you call them, established, you know, established like protocol or custom. You know, it's, um, it's called the context. The word emancipation means to make over as property. The word emancipation means to make over as property. So let's understand this very, very carefully, right? Let's understand this, the word e-man, right, e-man. You know, sound like a little something like i-man or a e-man, right? E-man said pay shun. Emancipation is making me wait. Right, that's a good song, right? <laughs> emancipation is making me wait. Yeah, emancipation they're making uh, a lot of us wait. They're making our people wait from 1860 to 1960. Think about it for a moment. You know, they they had the same right. They had more rights in 1860 than they did in 1960. In fact, in 1960s, the rights that they so-called gave black people, black people had already fought and bled and died for in 1860. So who's shamming who? They're right about one thing. Black people, especially we black men, we are not, we are failing our people. Because some, they're doing all of these things, running running circles around us, and the only thing we can do is kind of just mope and go around and do dope and, and say stupid and say disorganized? What, what's going on? I don't know. I mean, everybody got to choose their destiny, right? Okay, so emancipation basically means um, to make, right, to make over. You wonder why makeovers are so popular, right, on all these shit shows. I mean, these uh, daytime shows. I mean, um, there's a lot of people got some funny names, interesting names for these shows. But not to get all to make over as property, right? To make over. Now, highlight the word makeover and highlight the word property. So emancipation. We're gonna tell you more about this. We're telling you about this fraud of July. This fraud of July. You see? Because when you recognize that the lion of the tribe of Judah Right? Not just not just the lion of the tribe of Judah, but we're talking about Beta Israel. We're talking about the oldest we're talking about Jewish, Hebrew, black Hebrew people who have a a a a, a practice that is nearly three thousand six hundred years old. And then some peckerwood out of Eastern Europe one who has a custom that's a couple of hundred years old at best. I mean, a hundred years, a couple of hundred years in his hands, he got it from some other people, you understand, who are dark-skinned people of color. But be that as it may, you understand. Um, but he's going to tell our, our people that they're not Jews because, you know, it's so, it's so ridiculous. It's almost like if we were to take this as a legal thing, right, as a legal matter. If the Beta Israel, Haile Selassie, and the righteous Ethiopians at home and abroad, if our history and tradition is at least 3,600, 3,000 to 3,300 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, years old, that means at the, the furthest estimation, it's at least 3,000 or so on the high or low scale longer a tradition, a culture, history, archival, factual, um, witnesses, all of these kind of things, right, than the so-called European tradition. It's like me taking the American Constitution or the picture of all the people signing it and painting all these people like my friends and, and then trying to claim, look at this picture. That means we own America because... All these signers of the Constitution were black people and they were my relatives. Who, who would go for that? But this is exactly what white supremacy has done. They've changed the pictures 
You know what I mean? You stealing and, 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 and killing and destruction, as Christ tells us the thief would, would do. So we would know, let's say you would know them by their fruits. You understand? We would know them by their fruits. Look around this broad, wide world. You understand? The fruits of it is the Gentile white domination, white supremacy, the fruit of it. And it's strange because it only seems like um, a very few are getting it. But then the Bible says that many go into the broad way, but only a few find the narrow way, but still preach and teach we must. We must communicate the good news, and we must live the good news. So consequently, when people have been emancipated, when a people have been emancipated, right, what happens to them? They are the property of the proclaimer. Did you know that? When people have been emancipated, they are the property of the one who proclaimed the emancipation. So Abraham, not the biblical, Lincoln, right, he proclaimed emancipation. And let's not even talk about Juneteenth. Juneteenth, because the lot of blacks didn't find out until July or June 19th is when they kind of found out that, oh, word, we're free, right? So, but there's a slight makeover. There's a slight makeover. This key word, to make over. To make over. You know, a lot of black people are ashamed of their blackness, so they got to be made over as white people because they have to be made over in the image of their owner in the image of their master to match their artificial name and other artificial 13th and 14th Amendment um, artificial status. So who authorized the emancipation of the slaves? Who became the new and different owner of the black property? Lastly, would the slaves know the difference? Would the slaves know the difference between their old master and a new master? And this is one of the main reasons why black folks, even the most ignorant, that's ignorant for you people who, who um, think of yourself as intellectual and scholarly, you understand, that the most ignorant Negroes even know nothing has changed. This is why black folks be like, yo, shit hasn't changed, man. Shit is still the same, man. Ain't nothing changed. Because look at the last question right here. Would the slaves know the difference between the, their old master and the new master, except this new master is not individualized like the local plantation owner, you know, the rich white male land-owning gentry. Instead, it would be the federal government, right? The Emancipation Proclamation was followed by the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which established civil rights for the black slaves and created a new type of citizenship. Now, I want to put this up here, too. A new kind of citizenship. So I want to put this word right here, citizenship. We have a, we have a, little, a little pun in the society. We call it being a shitty son. A shitty son, right? You know, when, when you want these Negroes, you understand, all caught up in this and don't know, you know, don't know, the truth, you're a shitty son. You're always saying, you're, you know, what's up, son? Shitty son, right? A new type of citizenship was created. In 1866, remember, it was 1865 that those two French guys wanted to send a gift to America, a statue for the harbor, the Hudson Harbor or whatever, New York Harbor, and to send it to America, but the image would be of an African woman named Lady Liberty breaking the chains of slavery as an honor for the American Civil War, so forth and so on. And the Peckerwood, you understand, the so-called Anglo-American, the so-called European, I like to call them anglo -pean. They're anglo -pean. The kind of, the peons, the peons for sure, you understand. But then Solomon said something interesting in the Proverbs. He said, like, he saw great wickedness. It's like the, 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 the servant is riding on horses, and the master has to walk barefoot. In other words, he saw this reverse, this flipping of the script. 
and we're living in the time when the heavens is seeking to prompt the script to flip right side up. You know what I'm saying? But Negroes have been so made over as property and are in this new shitty sun or citizenship that was created by the Emancipation pro Proclamation of Abraham, not our biblical father, but the Peckerwood Lincoln. People say, but, but he, he's a, he freed the slaves. Those Negroes, a lot of them couldn't even read or write. The ones who could read or write, they were somewhat happy, but not really fully. They understood even better, and many of them wrote about it, too. You understand? It's only now that we have Google and stuff, and a lot of old books are now Googled and everything, that you can really even read these books and be like, what? When was this written? The Emancipation Proclamation was followed by the 14th Amendment. So after this, there was the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which established civil rights for the black slaves and created a new type of citizenship. In 1866, Congress, for the first time, notice that Congress is not called progress. It's not called progress. It's called Congress. I, I, I digress, right? Congress, for the first time, attempted to define citizen, I mean citizenship of the United States states by enacting the Civil Rights, the Civil Rights Act, August 9th, 1866, right? Which was declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. These blood clots, these bald heads, can you imagine that? After all of that, still the but see, this made a lot of Negroes think, okay, we have a cause here. Let us pray and let us trust the Jesus who looks like this white boy over here who happens to actually look just like the guys who've been beating us, raping us, and doing all this. But when we get to heaven, he's going to treat us better than this white man did. I got something I want to sell you. It's a bridge in New York. You interested? Finally, in 1868, now this is amazing, add 100 years to this, add 100 years to 18, 1968, Congress used the same language in the 14th Amendment, which was intended exclusively for the newly freed black slaves. This amendment granted civil rights and other benefits. <laughs> you know, when you get on so-called well, I mean welfare, they give you a card. What is the card called? What is the card called? It's called a benefit card, right? A benefit card, right? Because remember that when the slaves, so-called black enslaved Ethiopians and Africans, trauma victims, you understand, know victims of a holocaust, a genocide, an exploitation, the worst in the history of humanity, you understand? I mean, when you, when, you, when you just track how many people, how long it went on, too, and how many of our people are at the bottom of the Atlantic, which was called the Ethiopic Ocean, then you can kind of get an idea why we don't dismiss the so-called uh, Nazi Holocaust. You understand? But, I mean, how can you even deny if that really happened to you, that means you must be able to understand the suffering, you understand, of the lost sheep. Otherwise, you're dealing with the fraud of July. You understand? You're dealing with the fraud of July. I kind of try to connect that right there, right? Now, this amendment granted civil rights and other benefits. In exchange, what? In exchange? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? They're just saying that... We're free, but we have to exchange something? I mean, but what would Negroes have to exchange? You know, the Bible said the devil wants your soul. <laughs> wow. In exchange, it imposed an obligation. Obligation? That means that you got to do this. You understand? I don't got to do nothing but stay black and die. You, that's maybe why those Negroes used to say that kind of shit. But in exchange, it imposed an obligation upon the slaves. An obligation upon the slaves. That's so much you Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, or African Americans, AAs, Alcoholics Anonymous. You understand? An obligation upon the slaves to pay for the debts of the federal government. Oh, shh. So, <laughs> now we should understand, or really overstand, 
why the man who is the man in the highest office of the land is even where he got to be. Y'all said, no, let's go. We voted for him. Really? How many Negroes do you know in the electoral college? See, see, but maybe that's a little bit too much. That's a little bit too much. Um, this begin with, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And, and you'll be all right when you get up to come quickly, Lord. You understand? Amen. You know, when you get up to that point. But in exchange, it imposed an obligation. So there's an obligation upon the slaves to pay for the debts of the federal government and the corporation defined at Title 28 U.S.C. Code, United States Code 3002-15A, or also see Abute versus U.S. 359 U.S. 187, um, dated March 30th, 1959. The United States, I mean, states government is a corporation with respect to the state. This is why you always hear, you're probably hearing this a lot, because some of y'all might be watching the elections and was Obama going to win? He's not going to win. What about Romney Care? What will we get from Romney Care? We know about Obamacare, overly affordable health care, but what about Romney Care? You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of talk about states' rights and all this stuff. Every time something's going on, people tell me, oh, the states' rights, and the states are going to do this, even though he's passing that, and this might go through. The states are going to oppose that, even though they get money from the federal government. But all of it is on the backs of the lost sheep. That's what I want to remind you of in this fraud of July. You know what I'm saying? A special for the fraud of July. This fraud of July. Right? Um, so the United States government is a corporation in respect to the state. How do we know this? From volume 20 of Corpus Juris Secundus. 